Hi, I'm Sam Benyako. This presentation is entitled Forward Converter. The forward converter belongs to the family of converters with isolation, which are very useful when connecting to the power line. Before starting, let me clear up out some very important point. There is this intuitive feeling that there is no way to transfer DC current through a transformer. That is, the feeling is that the transformer is an AC device, so the signal has to be AC at the input and AC at the output. Well, this is not strictly correct. You can transfer uh, DC current through a transformer if you use some switching arrangement. And I'm showing here a case in which you have a transformer. There are two switches, S1 and S2, which are turned on simultaneously. So here they are turned on, and here they are turned on. And as they are turned on, of course, the V in is imposed on a primary. You'll get an output voltage depending on the turn, um, turn ratio of the uh, transformer. You have an output voltage. Here it is, that's the output voltage. And obviously, the output voltage, which is V in times N, and the turn ratio, will be the current. So you have a pulsating current coming out, and if you have the pop proper filtering, you can get a uh, DC uh, current uh, continuous with some ripple on it. So this is actually the principle that is used in the uh, forward uh, converter, but um, in a little a different way. Now you don't really have to have two switches, uh, you can have a switch, which by the way in an electronic circuit will be of course a uh, MOSFET device, I'm just showing it in a symbolic way. So you can have one switch and one dial. So when the switch is on, voltage is imposed, there's the voltage, output voltage here, current flowing here, and you'll get again the voltage here. So with a switch and a dial, you can do the trick of transferring DC current through this transformer. So here we have the basic configuration of the forward convert converter. I'm showing here just the energy transfer section. There's another section that we'll have to deal with, and uh, that is the reset of the transformer, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So what we have here is a transformer and then we have here a, this output section, which uh, for those from familiar with other uh, DC to DC configuration, this is actually a buck converter because we have a pulsating voltage coming in here when the switch is on. And uh, consequently, the operation is very similar. Uh, so the current will pass through here and will charge the inductor, and then the inductor will actually uh, discharge into the output. So this is called the buck-derived uh, topology. Now let's have a uh, deeper look into the operation uh, of this output section. Now, here is the switch, and it is turned on periodically. This is the period. This will be the on time, T on, and of course, T on over the period is defined by the, the duty cycle. Now, as the switch turns on, we'll find a voltage V2 at the secondary, which is N times V in, depending on the turns ratio. So let's have a look now at this point Vx at this junction and see what's the voltage at this point. Now, when the switch is on, we're going to have at the secondary a voltage which is V2, which is n times uh, V in. And at Vx, we're going to see practically the same voltage except for the voltage drop on the dial, which I'm going to then neglect at this point. Now, the voltage across the inductor 
will be then this voltage here Vx minus V out. So we're going to have now certain voltage on the inductor. This is uh, Vx minus V out. Now when the switch is non-conducting, there is no V2 and what will happen is that this current flowing through the um, the, uh, inductor will be actually clamped by the diode. It'll be a catching diode, and consequently, this point Vx will drop to ground, so that uh, the voltage across the inductor now is plus for the V out and minus for the ground. So this is the minus section. Now, as we know. The average voltage on an inductor during a period or over a long period of time must be zero because otherwise the average current will drift either positively or negatively. So this area, which is during the time T on, must be equal to this area, which is during the time T off, and this is, as I've said, minus V out. So equating these two areas, we find out that the transfer ratio of the forward converter is n times d on. This is very similar to the back converter, except for the n, which is sort of a extra uh, transfer ratio uh, caused by the transformer turns ratio. So by choosing the transformer, you could get a higher voltage or a lower voltage at the output. Okay, now I'm coming to the problem of transformer reset. Now, a real transformer will have an inductance when looking at any of the windings. So Let's consider the primary here. So the actual practical transformer can be modeled as an ideal transformer. Ideal transformer has infinite inductance for the windings, plus the real inductance of the primary. Now, as the <coughs> switch is turned on, there is a voltage imposed on this L sub M and the current, of course, will go up because we know that the I of TT is V over L and when V is constant, L is constant, the I of T is constant, so the current through this inductor will go up. Now, the given point, I'm turning off the switch, it's non-conducting, I'm interrupting the current, so consequently, well, Looking at the same state space equation, when the IDT, that is this interruption, is happening in a very short time, a high voltage will develop. Now the question is, what would be the polarity of the voltage? Well, to find out, we sort of put an imaginary resistor across the inductor. We say that the current was flowing this direction. And as we turn off the switch, there's a continuity of the current. And consequently, we find out that the voltage here will be plus. So that is, the voltage here will start climbing up higher and higher and higher. It'll reach V in and it'll go beyond it. So actually, uh, it'll go higher. So this is good because this actually reverses the polarity on the inductance. When the switch is on, the polarity is this way. And as the voltage builds up to the other way, um, the polarity reverses. This is the natural behavior of the inductor. This is good, but we can't allow it to go on and on because eventually the voltages will be just dangerous and there will be a breakdown. So what can we do? We can sort of clamp the voltage to say uh, some auxiliary source so that 
the voltage as it goes up it'll clamp to here now obviously in order for the uh, average voltage on the inductor to be zero this voltage here or the reset or the clamping voltage must be higher than V in so that at the beginning we had this thing when the switch is on and then we'll have it the other way and here it shows it schematically this is during the on time and during the off time we would like to have something like this if the V reset is very large, very high that the voltage is high voltage uh, will accumulate this as we call it volt seconds this area very quickly and in fact at this time there'll be no current flowing through this inductor it'll sort of taper off to zero now the border line is, is shown here that is we want this area to be equal to this area and this area is v in times t on and this area is v reset minus v in times d off so these are the requirements for the reset voltage now this is a bit awkward to have another voltage so let's move one step forward and say that we can catch this uh, magnetization current by an auxiliary winding call it n sub 3 so that when the primary current is flowing energy is passing to the secondary when the switch is turned off the magnetization current of the body of this element of this magnetic element will find its way here and it'll come out and be clamped to the um, V reset now for the same uh, condition of uh, zero uh, average voltage across the inductor uh, we find that this uh, V reset has to be uh, complying with this relationship so that uh, we'll have sufficient volt seconds accumulated during the off time to neutralize the on time this is still awkward to have another uh, source so we now get to the final solution and the solution is uh, to actually dump this current back to V in that is during N1 current is passing this way here is the magnetization inductor current is building up and then during the off time when the switch is off this magnetization current through the turn ratio will be actually passing this way and clamped to the V in so that we have one source which is actually feeding the power charging the inductor and then getting back this energy uh, stored in the inductor as to so as to uh, balance out the current or to sort of reset the transformer and uh, we find that the turn required turns ratio of n3 to n1 is dependent on the d on and d off of course if d on is very this say this is the period and d on is long time obviously we need here a high voltage to compensate for it so there's a trade-off or there's a relationship between the uh, the on and the off and the um, turns ratio so here is the uh, complete circuit of a forward converter we have the output section which is the buck basically a buck uh, converter we have the transformer we have the extra reset windings and now to calculate the winding we already talked about it but let's just go over it because it's important um, what we do we just make sure that we'll have a sufficient reset volt second 
um, to uh, reset the uh, transformer completely so it starts afresh uh, on the next cycle. So we can do the calculation at any windings, and I am doing it here for N1, so assuming just looking at N1 and see what I see here. So during the on time, I see V in. During the off time, I see V in reflected through the N3 to N1 uh, uh, transformer or winding ratio, turns ratio. What is really happening here when the, the situation is entirely balanced is that the current, the magnetization current is going up, and then at this point it starts going down and it'll reach again zero. Now obviously we don't want to work here at the very critical point, so usually we would make this area a little bigger, but it's not going to be used, it's going to be truncated, and it'll be sort of stopped here, uh, and we have here this reserve uh, area for possible uh, duty cycle variation. So, summing all this thing up, uh, we find, uh, I'm not going through this mathematics, whoever wants to look at it, please stop the video and just have a look at the very simple derivation, and you get here the relationship which says what should be the number of N3, number of turns, and um, should be smaller than this. The smaller means that you have this extra reserve uh, area. Now, another issue that needs to be taken into account is the fact that during the reset, let's have a look at the transformer again, during the reset, the voltage is of this polarity, that is reversed, reversed to the polarity of the uh, normal operation when the switch is on. Now here the switch, sitting here, it's off, the voltage is on a reverse polarity, so the voltage with respect to ground, that is the voltage on the switch now, is V in plus this voltage. So this is an extra uh, voltage stress on the transistor. The larger the neon, the larger will be the voltage stress, because you need to keep the area equal to the on time. So therefore, uh, there is a, a situation here that one has to be aware that the voltage imposed on the transistor when it's off, it's higher than V in, and easily calculated to be this expression. So it's higher than V in, it's one plus something, and of course, as I've just said, depending on the duty cycle. Now, if we look at the reset winding, there is a question, of course, what, how heavy should be the wire? That is, uh, how much uh, current is going to flow through N3 so that we can choose the winding? That is, the size of the wire uh, that we are going to use. Now, in the case of N1, it is mainly dependent on the power delivered to the load. That is, we have a certain current at the output, we have a certain current at the input, depending on the transfer ratio, and therefore we know what is the current here, and we can calculate the, the uh, wire side required. Now, let's have a look now at the waveform that we are expected to see. In the case of, uh, let's start with the secondary, this is a typical uh, buck converter, so during the on time we see current going up, and during the off time there is no current uh, in this direction. So when reflected to the primary, this is the primary now, this is the primary now, we see that um, we have the same form, except that of course uh, the current 
uh, will be uh, translated through this uh, turns ratio. Now, if we take the magnetization into account, then we have to uh, remember that not only we have the current going through the transformer to the load, we have an extra current now building up and uh, for the magnetization of the transformer. So this is the basic output current. This is the magnetization of the transformer. And this is now will be the total current. This is in fact the current that this um, switch will see. Okay. Now, during turn off, the magnetization current is carried out by uh, N3. Now, the peak current here that I'm going to see at N3 depends on the peak current that I'm going to have or that I had at N1 turn. That is, when I had this magnetization current building up, I reach a certain value. This will be the I peak at N1. And then this current is now transferred to um, the N3 winding. And consequently, the I peak of N3 winding will be I peak of the N1 winding times the turns ratio, and that will be N1 over N3. Because I peak N3 times N3 is equal to I peak N1 times N1. So, knowing the peak current here, knowing the time it'll take it to taper off to go back to zero, we can calculate the RMS value here from which uh, we will uh, get the information required for selecting the wire with uh, wire diameter of the um, N3 wind. This uh, brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you, you have found this uh, presentation useful. Thank you.